Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is my life in Taiwan. My name is Alan, but today we are not in Taiwan. Welcome to beautiful Korea. to be sure that South Korea I'm talking about not that one up in the north but yes we traveled with uh, a couple of teachers from school five of us have made the trip up north to this freezing country and to be honest as you may know from some of my other videos about Taiwan I like to share my knowledge and teach a little bit about the culture and the different things that go on in Taiwan but here in South Korea I have absolutely no idea about what is going on, how it's different to Taiwan, not really sure about the different foods and not really sure about what I'll be doing this week. Therefore, this video may not have much of a story, may not have much of a theme, but really just wanted to bring you with me and show you what we get up to here in South Korea. First things first, I'm gonna try and find some breakfast. Right, okay, so here we are with about the most non-Korean breakfast I could have possibly hoped for. We're in Starbucks. I asked the hotel receptionist, what can I get for breakfast? And she said the breakfast shops aren't open yet. Whether or not that's a misunderstanding or something completely different about here in Korea, the only option that seemed available to me at the moment is Starbucks. Not exactly what I had planned for my first breakfast here in Korea. But hopefully when the other teachers finally get themselves up and out of bed, they'll have done a little bit more research and I'll have something a little bit more cultural to show you. As for now, time for me to get this uh, pork cutlet sandwich eaten, which is incredibly spicy, as is most of the food here in Korea. But yeah, sandwich and a coffee, about as British a breakfast as you could get, but hopefully more Korean culture coming up later. So as you may have seen from that little clip of footage, I've met up with the teachers. I've actually already got myself a Korea tour card, a bit like a yo-yo card we find in Taiwan. I've recharged it and this card is going to help me use Seoul's MRT system to get ourselves up to a very cultural place which is known in Korean as Yongbokhung. I've probably absolutely murdered the pronunciation of that. But anyway, yes, definitely a lot more cultural than Starbucks. And hopefully I'm going to get some of these teachers on camera to tell us about it. At the moment, they're a little bit shy. But get ourselves on the train and then I'll tell you more about this beautiful place we're going to. Okay, so we are off the MRT now, still on our way to uh, Palace, but on the walk there from the MRT station, we're actually passing through this beautiful little plaza, this little city square. Sorry, can't get these Korean names. Something like that, uh, plaza. And as I mentioned, as you can see, I know very little about the Korean culture, the Korean history. But one of the teachers, Shelly, just told me that this statue behind me, this guy, uh, in Chinese, his name is Sejong Dawang. Uh, that's uh, Sejong the Great, 
Apparently he was the fourth king of Korea and uh, around about the 15th century, it was this guy, he created the Korean alphabet. Uh, so we've got him to thank for all of the confusion on the signs. Uh, but yes, uh, beautiful little square, interesting place. Not too sure anything else I can tell you about it, but let's get ourselves through it and to that palace we're away to. Okay, so right behind me is the main entrance to the palace that we're visiting today. This is known as Guanghua Men and is the largest of several gates entering into the palace. And all of these facts I'm giving you, I'm learning from Wikipedia as I go, just like a typical tourist, but I thought I'd share them with you. And it was built in 1395, but it was actually destroyed during the Japanese invasion of 1592 and left in ruins for 250 years. But it was actually restored, uh, see, not too sure been restored now it's as beautiful as it was before and as I said it's the entrance of this palace so let's get through it and go see what's on the other side to our final destination for this video. This is the Gyeongbokgyeong Palace. Uh, as you can see, an absolutely beautiful example of some ancient Korean architecture. And all of my knowledge that I'm about to share with you comes directly from Wikipedia, directly from Google. But as a tourist, learning as I go, I thought I'd share with you. Uh, built in 1395, by the Joseon dynasty and actually destroyed during the Imjin War in 1592, as I mentioned outside, uh, but later restored in the 19th century. This palace uh, here, of course, is the main building, but I'm not sure if you can see all around there, all of these buildings, all of this uh, courtyard surrounded by the palace building itself, 7,700 rooms. Not much else I can tell you about it, uh, talk about modern day, it's obviously a very touristy uh, kind of place and they have this really cute thing of the tourists can come and rent the traditional Korean outfits, traditional Korean clothes. Makes for a very interesting sight to see uh, people of all different nationalities, Western, Eastern, dressed in these traditional clothes, walking around the palace, making sure that they get their Instagram shots. But yes, I think that's pretty much all I'm going to share with you today, as I mentioned, I don't want to pretend that I know too much about it. Uh, it's very weird for me making a video about a country that I'm not too sure about. But yeah, I wanted to share this experience with you. If any of my subscribers are Korean, I'm sure there's one or two of you in there. Then by all means, let us know any more info that I've missed out or any mistakes that I've made. Uh, would love to hear more from my Korean team of VVVIP. But as for now, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Tell your friends about the channel. Let's get bigger and bigger. But I'm going to say goodbye. And as always, I'll see you next time in my life in Taiwan. Peace.